Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, I just got some primer on the underside of the body tub. And I think you can see in the background a little bit. Uh, the hood, fenders, grill, dash, and tailgate have four coats of primer on them. The underside has four coats. And I'm going to let this uh, <clears throat> set up uh, probably for the rest of today. And then we'll flip it over and do the uh, inside and outside. But um, it's coming along. Um, blue paint is going to be mixed up this afternoon. Uh, there was a match. Uh, I sent the glove box door. They matched it. They're mixing that up for me this afternoon. And I should have that by the, uh, by the weekend. So we're just going to let the solvents uh, flash out of this and <clears throat> get back to this. Uh, it'll be flipped over when I get back to it and we'll do the inside and outside. I've got the Model 30 uh, front end set up on some horses and we're going to work on that the rest of the day. Okay guys, this is that um, Dana 30 front end out of a 1980 CJ7. Uh, it's got uh, 307 gear ratio and it came in on a pallet and this is basically how it came in. And I pulled the cover off yesterday uh, to drain the fluid and it was completely dry. There was no lube in there. Uh, I still have to get it apart to see if there's any trouble in there or not, but nothing came dripping out of there. And the brakes are frozen, uh, the calipers are frozen up, the rotors are rusted real bad. Um, this one here, the ball joints uh, are, are the, the knuckle is turning, which is a good sign. I can see by the by the cotter pin in here um, somebody either changed the ball joints or had this nut off for some reason or put uh, there's not a factory cotter pin in here at all uh, but this side is moving that hub works but it's very hard to turn this side I can't even budge the knuckle it's locked up tight the ball joints are frozen up I can't move it um, and this hub has failed. I can't turn. I can't turn the uh, the dial here, so that's messed up. Uh, caliper is frozen, and for some reason, you know, I had a bar on there, and and I can't even I can't even get that to turn. So uh, it's going to be complete brakes. Uh, ball joints are going to have to go in there. Uh, probably a set of hubs. I'll see how the wheel bearings go. And I'm going to start to tear this down now. I'll show you the process. I'm going to break it down and then take it in the back and sandblast everything squeaky clean. Okay guys, we're going to remove the caliper first. And on, on an 80 CJ, you have you, you want your one bolt there. And this is a wedge type setup in here. Uh, this is a quarter inch hex uh, bolt. Well, it takes a quarter inch hex driver, is what I'm saying here. Uh, so that'll come out. And sometimes they can be a bear. And it's a special, has a shoulder on it that gets caught in there. Uh, on the other side, they had already replaced it with a regular bolt because they probably stripped out that, that quarter inch bolt. Um, but anyway. It's a wedge setup, so that's gonna that's gonna drive out. You just take a, a hammer and a punch and just drive that. So that's what you'll have. You'll have your shim and your and your piece there and the bolt gets captured in there and uh, that's what holds your caliper in a lot of times they don't come out that easy you know they could be rusted in there and when you put them back in there uh, a little bit of anti-seize on the slide uh, will help out got fairly new pads on it but uh, calipers are locked up tight
Okay guys, the um, the hub is kind of mangled up here. Uh, spring came out. When you get the main hub off, there's going to be a snap ring next. With a good hub, that will just slide right off. This one's going to give us a little grief. Hang in there, let me grab a little pry bar. Okay, sometimes you got to pry that little seal out of there. And then the rest of the hub will come off. And these are in tough shape, they're going to have to be replaced. And we're going to go after the wheel bearings next. You can see somebody's been on these with a chisel already. Uh, I'll get the correct socket and take those off. Okay, after you get your hub off, you're going to be looking at your wheel bearing lock nuts. Uh, they're supposed to have a tab bent over so they can't loosen up. And you can see this one was just sitting in there. And these would have loosened up and the, the whole, everything, the wheel of brakes, everything would have been wobbling. And uh, it would have led to a mess. Uh, let me get a pick. I'll dig that one out and then there's another one behind there. That's supposed to be bent over and you can see it's bent over this way. They put it in and they tried to lock their inner nut. Um, but we'll replace these. They're, uh, they're just a couple dollars. And then there's another nut. This inner nut is what puts the preload on your wheel bearing. And the outer nut locks it. I'll show you how to adjust them when we put it back together. There's your washer and your outer bearing and the inner bearing is in there with a seal. And I'll show you all that as I put it together. Okay, I've got the nuts off that hold the spindle on. These little remnants right here are all that's left of the shield that's supposed to be in there. And I've got a shop manual here. I hope you can see that. So far we've taken off the hub, our wheel bearings, the rotor, here's your inner bearing. Now there's supposed to be a dust shield right there, but it's completely rotted away and missing. So, um, I'm going to have to find another one of those. And right now, I'm going to try and get the spindle off. And that has a shoulder in there, and sometimes they could be a bear to come off there. And don't just go smashing on that with a hammer, because you'll miss and you'll hit your bearing surface and you'll make a mess of it. This is specific to remove spindles. There's a couple different size threads in there. And I got it attached to my slide hammer. Across it. Well, let me try and get that on. Oh, that's a disaster. Hang in there. Okay, uh, it took me a little bit, but I got it threaded on there, and uh, let's just see how that comes off for us. As you can see, it was pretty well rusted in there, and they're a real bear to come off, and that shoulder is so deep in there, if you tried to bang it with a hammer, you'd go nowhere. So... The right tool and a slide hammer is a way to get those off. Okay, we're ready to pull the axle now. And as you can see, I can't turn that U-joint. It's completely rusted. The axle shaft, little dust collar here is almost completely rusted away.
and that is your inner seal surface and I'll polish that up before I put that back in but um, obviously we're going to need some U-joints in there and uh, I'll clean the axle shaft up and uh, and see what that looks like okay we're going after the steering knuckle next we gotta break the upper and lower ball joint free that's a 1 5 16 nut and we'll see if the impact gun will take it off okay that's no problem the bottom one in there is an inch and an eighth and it looks pretty rusted uh, I have to reach in there with a uh, with a ratchet and a socket Okay, that's your thin bottom ball joint nut on there. It has to be thin so the uh, the U joint can spin around in there. <clears throat> now we're just going to whack that with a uh, a dead blow, and the knuckle will come right off. Okay, I had to take a regular sledgehammer to uh, to knock this out, but you're just going to whack on that, and that's going to fall down in your hands. Uh, it's going to be harder than that. I really had to wail on that to get it out. But um, just give that a good smash, it'll come right out. And this, don't try and do ball joints without this particular tool. Uh, this seat is in there, and that's how you um, preload your ball joint. And you can get that tool just about anywhere. This is a snap on one, but uh, all the tool manufacturers make them. And it's for the ball joint split ring. And I'm going to take that out next. Okay, when you get your new ball joint set, that split ring is going to be in there. I'm just going to pull it out and show you what it looks like. That's the whole key to putting your ball joints in successfully. You can see it's got a split there, and as that goes down, it's tapered on the inside. It starts to squeeze it, and you got to have the right socket to uh, to preload that. So I'm going to leave this in when I sandblast because I don't want to hit the threads, but I just want to take it out so you can see it, and this will come new with your ball joints when you get them, and I'll show you the process for putting those in. Okay, I've got the other side axle shaft out spindles off all that stuff um, when you're taking your knuckle apart you know when you have the axle in the vehicle it's a lot easier it's a lot more solid than it is just on the horses but um, there's no thread on the top here and that's so you can, can you can hit it and, and unseat it without worrying about damaging the threads so it takes quite a bit of force to get those out and like I say, when, when you got in the vehicle and you got the upper and lower nut off, uh, you can't be afraid to, to really hit that to get it separated. Uh, it just needs the shock. So that's a part. We have the same um, split nut in there, and we'll leave that into sandblast. And um, we're going to work on getting these ball joints out of the knuckle. And uh, I'll show you how I do that next. Okay guys, we're going to get those ball joints out of the steering knuckle. Uh, this, is a, this is a very important kit to have in your shop if you're uh, doing any kind of mechanical work. Uh, this is the OTC 3-in-1 uh, service set. You've seen me use it before. Uh, you've seen me on the Willys Jeeps if you've been following along. I have a shock tool uh, to compress the shocks on the Willys Jeeps. Um, and this is good for ball joint work. Uh, you can do it on a later uh, uh, open knuckle axles. You could do all the ball joints and stuff. Uh, and then in addition to the basic kit, that's the basic kit. comes with a lot of things you're going to need. 
Um, then you could get, uh, this is the Master Ball Joint Adapter Set, again by OTC. And you have just about every kind of thing you can imagine to do Chevy, Ford, Dodge, all kind of ball joints. Uh, remove and install them. Um, but um, we're not going to need any of this stuff. Uh, it comes with everything you need. We're not going to need any of this stuff on this Jeep axle. I just wanted to show you what's available if you're doing any other kind of axle. Um, this just makes it a whole lot easier and safer. Uh, you're not banging things around and stuff. But, uh, let me move some of this stuff. I'll get set up, show you the pieces we need to do these uh, ball joints, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, guys, we just need about three pieces to uh, to get this ball joint out. You need your, your uh, C-frame and your pressure screw. We're going to take this guy and just put it that's, that's larger than the ball joint, so it's just a base for us. That goes on top so that when we push it out, the stud can come up through. And we do the bottom one first so that we can get the, the frame through to get the upper one out after this one's out of here. We'll just come right up through. So I got some, I got that bound up now. We're just going to take the impact gun. We're going to drive that upwards and it'll come right out. That's the easiest and the safest way to get ball joints out. Um, you know, you could try and bang them out with a hammer and, you, and metal can fly out of there and hit you in the eye or something. Don't just beat on these with a hammer. Uh, get the proper tools and it would be a pleasure to take them out instead of fighting with them. So now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put our spacer block there. And we got this same block. We're going to put that on there. Okay, now you can see the importance of taking the bottom one out first. Uh, we want to be able to get the threads up through there. Uh, same setup on top as on the bottom. Now we're going to drag those up through. And there is the upper ball joint, and you can see the rubber's all worn out and stuff, and it's pretty tough in there, rusted up and frozen up. You can feel it's kind of notchy in there. So we're going to need new ball joints, but that's the easiest way to get them out. Now we've got this broken down. We can get in here, sandblast, get all this rust out of here, get some good epoxy primer in there before we assemble it. So... I'll show you how to put these back in after everything's sandblasted and primed. Uh, I'll show you the, the setup we use to, to pull those back in with the same tools and uh, I'll show you the setup when that happens. Okay guys, we're getting ready to pull the, um, the carrier out with the ring gear and if you've been watching my other videos you know that it's critical that you mark these so they go back in the same position. When this housing was built and it didn't have the tubes in it yet. Um, these caps were bolted down and then the finished bore was was made with these caps. So you can't turn them around or swap them side to side. Um, it, it just won't be right. So I just take a center punch and I'm going to put a prick mark here and one here. And on this side I'll put two. Hang in there. Okay, now I know that this will go back in the same spot once I pull these out. 
Now somebody's been in here before because there's all RTV, black RTV silicone on here. Um, and like I said, there was no oil uh, when, I, when I went to drain it. So I'm curious what's going on in there. I want to check the bearings out. I'll remove this, these two bolts and, and pull the caps. And then we'll pull this out and see what we can see. Okay, caps are removed. Uh, I've got a couple bars. Just going to get under the carrier on each side. And these little uh, Danas usually come out pretty easy. And just pop that out. <coughs> Shouldn't give you too much resistance. And keep the cup with the bearing. Okay, now if you ever have leaky axle seals, the seals are inside. There's one on each side here. So if you have lube dripping out your tube or coming out this tube here and you know you're getting differential lube out there, it's because these seals are bad. So you've got to go through everything I went through so far, get the axles out, uh, get the carrier out with the ring gear before you can get at those seals. And they're just pressed in there. And I'm going to try and pop them out with this bar. And that right there is an inner axle seal. And these can go bad on you. And we're going to replace them because we're in here. And um, this one was a little, a little bent up here before I took it out. So we're going to change these out. And when you're putting seals in, and you get this seal and you don't know how to put it in, there's a spring in here. See that little spring? You always take your spring and put it towards the oil. So the oil's in the housing here, so you put your spring there. You don't want to turn it around and put it in that way. Whenever you're putting a seal in on anything, the spring goes towards the oil. So just something to keep in mind when you don't know how a seal goes in or you get turned around or something. Um, spring inside towards the oil. Okay, you see the strap here that holds your U-joint in. Uh, up until 79, it was the regular U-bolt style that went through there and a nut went on each side and, and just a, a U-shaped um, U-joint strap. Uh, and then 1980, they went with this style, where they use these 12-point bolts and just a little saddle clamp here. And it's not as strong as the other one if you're doing any kind of off-roading or um, high-performance engine, anything like that. Uh, that little bolt, that 12-point bolt, is. Uh, is what's holding your the stress of the u-joint and he's got this little saddle clamp here uh, it's not the greatest uh, it will last if you just you know it's just a regular driver uh, it'll be fine but um, any kind of uh, horsepower bigger engine lower gears anything like that uh, you want to switch over to the, the earlier style yoke and it'll fit right in there and swap right in uh, it's just a little bit stronger so we're gonna get this pinion out next and uh, I'll show you how that goes. Okay, we're going after this nut right now. And we want to stabilize this yoke. And if, you, if you've seen me in other videos, uh, <clears throat> this is what I normally use. This will hold it. The sock will come up through here. And we use this to pull the yoke as well. Uh, when it gets into these later axles, with just this quarter inch bolt in here, I don't like to use the impact gun and stress those threads in the corners. Uh, normally it's a 5 16 through hole and I put bolts in there and I use this to hold it back. Um, I'm not going to do that with these just these little quarter inch holes. So I use a, uh, a wrench like this smooth you know don't, don't put a pipe wrench on there you'll you know mark it all up. That fits nicely on the uh, on the flats of that and we just go after that with the impact gun. Okay, I've got the impact gun set up. I've got our wrench on there, and we'll just zip that nut right off.
Okay, now I'll set up to pull that yoke off. Okay guys, I got a different kind of setup to get this yoke off this time. What I normally use, and you can go back on my uh, Willie's differential rebuilds and, and see this. I normally use this to hold it, get the nut off, and this pressure screw goes through here and hooks in like that. Then this will get bolted to the yoke and that pressure screw will draw the yoke right up. And this is my preferred way to do it. Except on the later models where you only have these tiny quarter inch holes. I don't like to put that much pressure on those quarter inch holes to, to pull that um, yoke off. So what I've got is a uh, two jaw puller and I've got the sides locked in with this crossbar and uh, we'll just hit that with the impact gun. It'll draw that yoke right up. Okay, I've got that hooked in underneath there. That's the strongest part of the yoke we can pull from. And these can sometimes be a bear, so let's just see how it goes. Oh, that one came right out easy. Uh, I don't recommend beating on those with a hammer. If they don't come off by hand, uh, put a puller on there just uh, so you don't mangle up those threads. Okay, we're going to go after this pinion seal next. And the easiest way to do that is with the correct puller. So we're going to take that, that's got some coarse thread there, threads there for your pressure screw. I'm just going to thread that down into the seal. And then we're just going to put our pressure screw down in there and draw that up. Okay, a couple turns on the thing there, and the seal pops right out cleanly. And then you've got an oil slinger in there, and I'll get a magnet to get that out. Then we're going to pull this pinion out, and uh, check the bearings on the pinion as well. Okay, I just picked this out with a magnet. Uh, this is a critical piece that goes under your pinion bearing, and keeps a lot of the oil away from dripping out your, uh, your pinion seal there. Uh, and keeps the oil right in the bearing. So now we gotta get the pinion driven down and, uh, and I'll put my hand over there and catch it. Um, they're usually in there pretty good and uh, I'll try and tap it lightly with a hammer. If it doesn't move uh, we'll get the air chisel on there like I like to do and that will shock it right down through. Okay this one's not too bad. It's coming right out. And what you have here is another oil deflector. And there's your pinion bearing. Here's your outer. And there's the pinion out of the case. Okay, I'm getting ready to knock the uh, bearing cups out. And just going in there with a punch. Uh, I bent this one because I like the way it sits up against the wall better. I use that for knocking uh, bearing cups out. So you just get on the edge of it, knock it out evenly. Okay, we had our pinion depth shims on that one. So I'm going to collect all that stuff and uh, I'll show you what I knocked out. Okay, this is how this was sitting in there. So I was knocking here, 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 and here with the punch. And the cup fell out. These are your pinion depth shims right here. That sets the whole uh, depth of your, your setup. And this slinger counts as part of your shims. Um, so when you're putting your setup back in, sometimes guys will discard this and then their pinion will be way out of whack and stuff. This has to go back in there. Uh, and it'll, a new one will come in the kit usually. So um, the bearings aren't terrible. Uh, the carrier bearings are worse than the pinion bearings. And uh, whenever there's any bearings bad in a housing, uh, I change them all. Um, we're freshening this thing up. It's the first time probably since 1980. So um, that's a pretty long service life for the bearings that were in there. So uh, we're going to upgrade and, and put all brand new bearings in here. Uh, like I say, the pinion bearings aren't terrible. There's just a little light pitting right there. It's hard to see. Uh, but the carrier bearings are starting to get the rollers to start to beat it into the cup there. Uh, and I'll try and show you that with the camera, but I don't know if you'll be able to pick it up. 
So this one's out, and I'll flip it over, and I'll get this last cup out. Okay, guys, I just knocked this pinion bearing out. Now that pinion bearing sits in there like so. And normally, on a lot of the older uh, axle housings and stuff, there'd be a little cutout right there in the, in the casting. There'd be cutouts, and you could take a punch, and you could knock your bearing out. And um, somebody just sent me a comment yesterday wondering how to get a bearing like that out. Uh, it's almost the exact size of the housing. It just sticks in a tiny little bit. So the way I get those bearings out, because you can't get a punch on it, and the way I get them out is I turn a piece of stock like this. Uh, we're gonna try and we're gonna try and set the camera up a little better. We'll be right back with you. Hang in there a sec. Okay, so that bearing's sitting in there and doesn't look like there's any way you can possibly get it out. So I turn one of these, and this diameter is exactly the diameter of the housing. I mean, it's almost a press fit. I mean, it's exact. You got to make that exact. You turn that on the lathe. This is just a. Um, <clears throat> these take out the carrier bearings. It's uh, it plugs up the hole so you can put the uh, the pressure screw on there. But um, I turn that the exact size of that. The bearing's sitting in there, and I come through this way, and you can see it's just just enough to catch on that. And with the axle turned over, I just drive this right through. It takes the cup with it and comes right out. Um, now you're going to hear out there a lot of guys say, uh, weld up your bearing. Uh, it'll shrink and it'll fall out and this and that. But it's just a pain. Uh, if you just take just a few minutes to turn a piece of stock the exact size of your housing uh, and just drive it through, it'll carry that cup out. And uh, you could do it for any size bearing. Um, just take a piece of scrap steel or whatever you have. Turn that diameter drive it through that couple come out and you could even save it again um, there's some light uh, scoring on this one so we're gonna change this one out too you see down here you can catch that with your nail um, there's just a little dirt in here probably at one point and it scuffed the bearings up a little bit so uh, we'll put a whole rebuild kit in here and, but that's the way to get bearings out if you uh, if you can't get a punch on them uh, just turn a piece of stock knock it right out Okay guys, that completely covers the teardown of the Dana 30 front axle uh, that's found in a lot of uh, CJ's. And what's going to happen next, I'll plug, up, I'll plug up some holes and stuff, put the cover on, take the steering knuckles out. Uh, everything is going to get sandblasted, squeaky clean. Uh, we'll put some uh, black epoxy primer on here. And then after it's in epoxy primer, uh, I will put everything together and show you the assembly process. And when everything is completely finished, we'll put it in black paint. Um, but I have to order a bunch of parts. I got to order bearings, um, ball joints, uh, things like that. I didn't look at the wheel bearings yet, um, but uh, I think they're probably going to be bad as well. So it looks like we're going to have to put all the bearings, ball joints, and, uh, and everything in this one. And um, that's what it takes to do a complete quality rebuild and get it back to factory specs. So. I will talk to my customer, get some parts ordered, uh, get this sandblasted when the weather is uh, with me here and it's not so humid out, and uh, you will see this one again, uh, probably in black epoxy primer, uh, back on the horses here, ready to be assembled. It might be a little bit while we wait for parts and do the sandblasting, but I will uh, take you back and show you the assembly process. So if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. And uh, as always, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch you on the next video.